Good afternoon. Our lesson of today comes from political development and systems, a place that is highly tested in an exam. So I want us to go through some communities in Africa and they see what is supposed to be done and the way Alan is supposed to prepare for the uh, for the exam. Uh, with me here, we have what you call the functions of traditional African leaders. We had the man, the old coyote, or the Nandi. The man was under the Nandi people. Re re remember, they resisted the construction of the Uganda, the Kenya Uganda line in, from 1896 uh, to 1901 to Kisumu. So, the functions of the Nandi under the coyote, he was uh, advisor to the Council of Elders, blessed of the warriors, Libonian of the Maasai also, blessed of the warriors and the certain disputes. Then we have some communities in uh, Africa like uh, the Koi Koi and the Sun. We would like to have a discussion come in the next two weeks from the Koi Koi political and uh, social organization. Those are the areas where they have uh, uh, focused it that we would like to have the political and the social organization of the Koi Koi and the Sun. Remember the Koi Koi, these are the Hotetons. They were purely pastoral farmers and also the Sun, these are the Bushmen. So under the uh, um, political organization of the Koi Koi, we say that uh, uh, these members, they were organized in a, in a clans according to seniority, whereby um, the senior most clan gave the overall uh, chief. So we can say that, that organization of the Koi Koi was placed under what you call the clan and the seniority kind of it, whereby the senior most clan elder became the overall chief. Um, we say that under the sun, under the Koi Koi, the overall chief had what he called less power since most of the cases were being solved at the clan level. So the overall chief had less influence uh, or less power simply because of uh, the, the clan elders had influences in those cases. But the overall chief was solving some major disputes like uh, murder or maybe uh, violence, things like um, uh, robbery with violence, things like that, like murder. So the Koi Koi chief was uh, to solve uh, the major disputes. But now we can see that uh, under the Koi Koi, the leadership was uh, structured, was centralized, since we had uh, a leader who was the overall chief. The Sani members, they had no what you call uh, the leadership structure. Under the Sani members, the leadership structure ended at the family level, whereby the matters affecting the family were being solved by the family members, especially the father and the mom. But uh, at the community level, the Sunni members had what you call the mutual agreement or the consensus. Since they had what you call decentralized government, the leadership structure among the Sunni was not clearly outlined since they had no leaders. Then we have what you call the roles of traditional African leaders. You can be asked about one, organizing of the African uh, labor collection of taxes, advising of the council builders. We have the Oligana Kingdom, another area that we are likely to have a discussion. Oligana Kingdom, boys and girls listening and watching this clip, they might ask you why the Oligana grew very fast. We see always that the transparent trade that gave a lot of benefits, a lot of income uh, to the kingdom, made the kingdom to grow very fast. And uh, why the kingdom corrupted, we say that um, we had what you call um, the attack from the Al Moravids, the, uh, the Arab traders from the north. So the kingdom grew very fast simply because we had what he called the transparent trade and also it had a very strong army, standing army, respected leaders, effective administration. That one made the kingdom grow very fast and expansion. But again, the main reason why the, 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 the kingdom of all Ghana kingdom collapsed, we had, I've said here, we had what we called the attacks from the Al-Mulavids. This is the main reason why the kingdom collapsed attacks from the Almoravids and also we had what you call over dependence of the transfer and trade all over dependence of one source of income the members from all Ghana they over depended on the transfer and trade and now when when the trade was captured the kingdom went down easily so a question might come in an exam in the next weeks maybe one the main reason why the all Ghana kingdom grew very fast we see that um, they depended all they were getting enough income from the transfer and trade. It is because of transfer and trade. And the reason why they declined, we say that um, the attack from the Al-Muravid, these, the the, these are the traders from the north who wanted the rich ground uh, among the, the old Ghana members. We have uh, another area of early visitors. We are likely to have a question from early visitors. 
They are saying that uh, I don't find the main reason why the foreign people came to Eastern Africa. We have the Arabs. The Arabs were mainly traders. They came to trade. And uh, from our arguments, you see, so you can see here the traders, the Arabs came to trade, and the missionaries came to spread what we call it Christianity. And um, Christ and the traders, we had uh, uh, the members like uh, Sayyid Said, we had uh, the Vasco da Gama. Uh, the, the, the Sayyid Said was an. Uh, uh, control the trade in the region and uh, and the first Kodagama came to look for the sea route to India. John Speck, what this person was did, did this man this man was an explorer. He discovered the source of River Nile and I remember after discovery Dr. Livingstone came to confirm the study of John Speck that uh, the River Nile has the source at uh, uh, Lake Victoria. Then we had uh, Rodney Craft, the first missionary who came into Eastern Africa and he came in 1844, then uh, he translated the Bible into Swahili and also constructed the first mission station at a place known as Rabai along the Kenyan, the Kenyan coast. Uh, the scrambling and the petitioning of Western Africa, we have also another question that, I, that is mainly asked uh, maybe why they were coming to Western Africa. We know very well that these members, they were... Uh, 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 they were they wanted to have what you call the raw materials from Western Africa, and that's why the scrambling and petitioning happened. Remember, once they came first, the war the, there was a war, a dispute, a dispute, a dispute among the, the European members. Then later, they went back to Bahrain, where they had a Bahrain conference of 1884 1885. And the Bahrain conference was led by the Otto von Bismarck, whereby they agreed on how to divide Africa amongst those European members. So they later came back and also acquired what they wanted. When these many members came, they were well determined. They said that we are coming we are to Africa to acquire for the raw materials because that was the main target why they came to Eastern Africa or to Africa. So the raw materials was their main target. Uh, so we are likely to have a question from the scrambling and the of Eastern Africa. Why they came, main reason, search for raw materials and also search for markets. But mostly they came to for raw materials. Also, search for markets, of course, yes. Other reasons, we had what you call um, list lessons. We had the spread of Christianity, obtain cheap labor. But also we had what you call uh, to look for land where they can settle surplus operation, look for land where they can do investment, others came for revenge, things like that. So reasons why they were scrambling in Africa, we have that question coming very soon in an exam. From here, we have what you call... Um, the negative and the positive response of Africans, we have those members who, who resisted, others collaborated. As you, can, as you can see on my screen, we have members like France. They applied the colonial policy of assimilation where Africans were being converted into uh, black uh, Frenchians. The Britain applied direct and indirect rule. Remember, like in the northern Nigeria, indirect rule was uh, applicable and assimilation or assimilado in Senegal. Then Belgium also applied what you call a direct rule in DLC Congo, whereby members were being punished once they failed to submit a quota rubber to the colonial government, severe punishments, including of chopping or cutting off of the, of the hands. So these members, this is how they were uh, behaving. Assimilation, the French in Senegal, led by the label, they said, the remember this man was a poet and a writer. He used what he called the uh, poetry to enlighten Africans. On the importance of uh, of uh, of being assimilated, on the, the importance of not using force to acquire colony the uh, independence, simply because when the white men came, they were very much determined that they were going to be uh, they, they, were, they were going to get what you call resistance in Africa. So they must wake up and stand so that they can get what they came to do in Africa. So the assimilation, Africans were hundred percent converted into the French Prussians.